Well, everyone, uh, Allison and I decided to change clothes. And uh, one of us moved since we uh, revisited the first three pillars from What Makes a Great Principle. And so thanks for being back on the podcast. Allison and I are going to actually um, leave you over the last few weeks. You've actually seen the first three pillars. Let's see if you, okay, Allison, I actually heard you on uh, Teachers on Fire podcast. So without looking at the book, we're going to do a little test. You ready? Yes. Okay. So today, Alice and I are going to record for resource maximizer. That's what we're doing. And visionary. What were the first three pillars without? Did I get them wrong? On the oh, you got them right. I was. I want to see if you can do it. Two, I want to see if you can do it two days in a row. So what? Okay. What, so um, building relationships. Yeah, relationship builder. Yeah. Continuous learner. Yeah. And talent cultivator. Boom. Like you, go, like, uh, you know what? You know what happens when you get them all right, right? You know what's going to happen. And this is very special. <laughs> little, air horn, little air horn. So, hey, thanks for being back. Um, actually, I'm really excited because when you're listening to this, uh, Allison is actually going to be at the United Conference, which is uh, NASSP, NAESP, and she's going to be presenting on what makes a group principal. So before, so let's just actually do a little promo for that before we get into that. So I am presenting before the keynote. So you're like the pre keynote. That's what I'm going to say. Pretty much. That's what I am. Yes. Right. <laughs> yes. So on Monday morning, I don't have that time memorized. I think it's like eight o'clock in the morning. It's right before the keynote though. Right. Cause I remember I keynote there years ago. It's the, there's a session and then everyone goes to the keynote and then their sessions. Right. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. And you don't want to miss out on those sessions before the keynote, especially what makes a great principal. And it's actually what makes a great principal. And if you're in the session, Allison's going to have a special announcement that day. Yes, I will. But we're not going to tell you what it is. No, so you got to go. <laughs> so yeah. So if you are listening to this podcast right now, um, unfortunately, I will be somewhere else presenting, uh, but Allison, uh, I know has presented on this before um, to actually the Minnesota elementary school principals, which I will be actually at next year, which I'm really excited about. Cause that's been yeah. like five years in the making. They wouldn't let me come in until Allison talked nice about me. And then they're going to be like, you know, George, you're pretty good, but Allison, Allison, but Allison. <laughs> I'm not going to try. I'm not going to try. I'm just going to go in there and say what Allison said. Yeah, and drop, drop the mic. And that's it. And, I, and then I'll <laughs> leave. All right. So, so today we're going to focus on resource maximizer. And this was like a really, this was actually an interesting chapter for me and Allison when we were talking about this, because this is not like a glory chapter. It's not like the exciting parts of leadership. It's actually kind of the boring part of leadership. And one of the things that I wrote about that I think is really, really important is that, it, and it drives me bonkers when people say, oh, we don't need managers we need leaders i'm like no i actually need both you you need both of those things so when the the i i, I wrote about this in innovators mindset it's one of the things that really stuck with me from like the, the stephen covey leadership training I, I did several years ago is that covey talks about this he says basically you lead people you manage things and mm -hmm. if you're not able to put things into the hands of the people you serve and you'll never make your vision come to life. And you know, you say like, oh, we want all these innovative practices. You know, we're gonna be really cutting edge technology. And that's a really nice thing to say, but then you actually have to make sure that you allocate money to those things. You gotta put in resources, not just even resources in front of people, but you also like have to give people time to understand the resource. And I'll ask you about the time, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna share a little story with you. I've never shared the story with you, Allison. This is like a, this is interesting. And maybe this is why you listen to podcasts. We're going to add a little bit, something extra here. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I, I worked, I worked with, um, and this is like totally ties into the resource maximizer. I worked with a two school districts in Illinois. This is years ago and they were one-to-one. -one. So sorry, one of them was one-to-one. -one. Every kid had a Chromebook. They were really excited about it. And the other school district wasn't one-to-one, -one, right? Yeah. So the one school district said, you know what our teachers are really struggling with? And they're, they're, we're hearing about it all the time. They don't know how to use these devices. We haven't given up professional learning. We haven't focused on developing, you know, like competency and using this, what we're going to do with the classrooms. So like, what would you do about that? Like, how would you focus on this? I said, well, let me, before I answer this, I, the other school district, 
what is the biggest issue that your teachers are frustrated with that they don't have devices <laughs> mm. right so one was like we got devices but we're mad about we didn't get professional learning time the other one is like hey uh we actually want devices and so like basically it's always like hey there's going to be some issue there so in both cases what i, I said, I said look, listen what i would do for the the for your district that doesn't have the devices i would actually ensure that as you're kind of getting this in the hands of teachers spend time providing professional learning so they actually really understand it from the viewpoint of a learner so how do you use this in professional learning don't just say, hey, put away your laptops, put away your devices, and then all of a sudden put Chromebooks in front of every kid when you actually haven't got your teachers to really understand that practice. For the school district that has the devices, I actually would agree with your teachers. You can't just like throw them and think things are gonna magically change. And if you actually look at any places that have added one-to-one -one devices in their schools, things haven't really improved in scores or anything like that because they just thought we're gonna put in devices, let's see what happens. So re maximizing resources isn't just about putting tools in front of your teachers. It's actually partly some of that, but it's also making sure that you actually prioritize time and find that. And one of my big things is really, if you don't actually give time to your staff to learn a new initiative, then it's not important. Like if you can't provide the time, and you don't do that. And you actually talked really beautifully about this idea about like really kind of leveraging time and providing time. So like, what are some things that you did as a principal to make sure that, you know, time was allocated. So it wasn't just like, here's things, but actually here's the support. So you can have an understanding to do this. Right. Just a, a comment about your story too, is one thing that we don't often do, especially with this idea of putting devices in the hands of kids is establish purpose. Mm -hmm. Totally. And the purpose should be aligned with our goals. Like if our goal is to increase student achievement or to decrease the dropout rate or increase uh, choice and innovation or problem solving or communication, like uh, that, that has to be established first. And that does take time. But it's interesting as a principal, right. I spent 19 years as a principal and like I would absolutely expect teachers to maximize the use of time for the things that are going to most benefit learning during the school day, right? Like yeah. we can all agree. We have to model that right. as leaders. We have to look at time as a valuable commodity resource, understand that when we gather people together, like think about the tens of thousands of dollars right. we're spending in meetings. And often we have meetings that have loose or no agendas, no like clear outcome to it, no follow through. And we know through research that the one of the most valuable commodities in the school is collaboration, like that collective mm -hmm. efficacy. What does collective efficacy mean? <laughs> it is interdependence. Right. I know you're she's teasing me, but it's working. No, I'm not. I don't think everyone knows what that term is. <laughs> I think people just throw it around. So Self-efficacy is when we believe that the actions that I'm going to take today can help achieve my goals, can produce a better tomorrow. Collective efficacy is under is this belief, firm belief, that when we work as a group, collectively take action toward a goal, we are going to better accomplish that goal. And where else than in a school would you want to emphasize and create time for collective efficacy? Because as, as if you have a K-8 building, right. like you're not going to have students leave eighth grade just and be successful just because they had a great kindergarten, third grade, and sixth grade experience. They need to have good learning experiences right. every single year. Right. So we have to work together to, to make sure that's going to happen. I was working with a group of teachers in California, and they said, you know, Allison, we don't have time for small group instruction. Uh, because our kids have so much work to finish. They're finishing their work. And I said to them, would you say they don't have time for lunch because they have too much work to finish? Right. They would, or no time for recess? Like, no, those things are going to happen at the Someone same time. Someone say no time for recess. <laughs> <laughs> right, they might take recess. Oh. Um, not in California, but uh, they they have to have time to eat every single day. They have to have time for lunch. So what if we made that small group time non-negotiable? And that's the same mindset for leaders. What if we make this opportunity time for collaboration 
non-negotiable? And how might we work that in? I work with schools who, or I've you know, been a leader of schools that have late start, early release, half days on Fridays, time for collaboration built in. They de- might not always use it well. And then I work with schools who are like, okay, my PE teacher has an open slot on Tuesday morning and Thursday afternoon. So I'm going to create a rotation to give teachers time to collaborate and work together. But there's a difference between like that transactional collaboration where like, oh, I made these copies for you and transformational collaboration where is where we're um, t- helping each other understand how to most effectively instruct and support our students. There's a difference between those two. So not only do we have to allocate the time for the collaboration, we have to come up with that vision and purpose together. That and that is like, and I I think that sometimes we in education just do the things that were done before. And I'm talking leadership especially, right? Yeah. So I remember when I uh, took over school as a principal. Uh, the school prior, we'd have, I think, 10 PD days. And I, I think that's actually rare, like 10 PD days throughout yeah. the year. And what was done was basically they had their staff meeting and their PD day for the full day, every, you know, 10 times a year. And I just know I can't hold my attention for a full day. That's yeah. like one thing. And I hate meetings. Like, and in education, we will have meetings about meetings. <laughs> like, we'll have yeah. a meeting to plan for a meeting. And it, 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 I just hate them. And sometimes we just have a meeting because we're supposed to have a meeting every Monday or whatever. And it's like, there's nothing to talk about. You're bringing people together. If you don't have anything to talk about, you don't need a meeting. That's my opinion, right? Some people just like being around each other. That's a you thing. Not everyone likes that. And a bunch of people won't say what I'm saying. They don't want to have the meeting. So uh, one of the things I did prior to the meetings, I'd say, hey, here's the agenda. Here's three things I need to talk about or five things or seven things, whatever. So I would send it out. And then I would say to my staff, if there's things that you would like to speak to that pertain to the entire staff, let me know and I'll add them to the agenda. Right. So you couldn't just say, I want to like, I want you to talk about whether kids should wear hats in school. It'd be like, no, you, if you want it on the agenda, you got to talk about it. You're bringing it up. So it's not my thing. It's a you thing. Right. So sometimes they would say, well, Hey, we need to talk about like grade three, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, that's not really a whole staff thing. That's a grade three thing. Can you find a time to figure this out? Like, can you do this? Okay. So it actually was a way for me to kind of filter out some stuff that really wasn't because no one, there's nothing worse than sitting in meetings and this has nothing to do with me. And like, we're sitting here for half an hour and there's so many things to be doing. So we'd have like the, the staff meetings were way shorter than what they were before. And Then I said, hey, we're not going to do a full day of PD. We're going to do a half day, but Mm -hmm. we're going to try to get a full day into the half day. So what I'm going to ask of you, really focus, really be present when we're doing this. And then the second half of the day, you do whatever you need to do. Prep for your class, do this. The deal I'm asking you is you need to be fully present so we can like, because I got to make sure that I'm like making my bosses happy and we're achieving what we've set out to achieve. But I don't think like kind of holding you for the whole day when I know there's a million things we could do in the classroom. So my teachers were so grateful for that to say like, hey, like, yeah, just give me some time to plan. Like we used to have um, no, I know this, this, I'm actually curious of your thinking of this. We used to have half days in my school where you were not allowed to go to anyone else's classroom and not allowed to talk to anybody. You, You couldn't email anybody. It was just so you could have time to yourself. You and I'm my- not saying I'm against collaboration. I'm not saying yeah. that at all, but sometimes like you're plant, you're like, oh, I have so much stuff to done. And then someone just, you know, comes into your room and then all of a sudden you're there till like seven on a Friday because, do you know what I mean? So it was like, hey, today let's just, we're going to do some stuff on our own and yeah. no one bug anybody and pe- and they loved it. Like they loved when we did that. I think like what you're speaking to is exactly what this pillar is about. It's maximizing the resource of yeah. time. The yep. reality is we got to make the copies. We have to do the things. So let's not pretend those things aren't there and and then just kind of slug our way through a whole professional development day when we know we're not, we don't have the capacity to learn together all day long. Right. When there's a million things we need to be doing. So like, I just, I just, and that to me, I think 
one of the things that, you know, obviously innovation is a focus for me. And when people think about innovation, they think about tech stuff, but it's, you know, it's in our leadership too. Many people don't want to go to become principals because they feel they don't want to do what their principal did. And I'm like, well, you're the principal. You can do what you want. <laughs> That's the beauty. You're the boss now. So like, unless you, if you do something really dumb, people typically at central office will leave you alone. So as long as you're doing what you need to do, but you don't have to do it the same way it's been done before. What do you want in a teacher? So this is actually, um, I will highlight Brad Gustafson um, was a great um, inspiration for this because I sat with him at a panel and I'm listening to him the way he did. Um, he provided opportunities for innovation to his staff and really kind of removed as many barriers as possible to make that happen. So I'm not going to tell you what he said because you got to read the book. But <laughs> it was like something really, he inspired me to really kind of think about this too. So resource maximizer, pillar four, We'd love to hear your thoughts, maybe some of your strategies you can share in the comment. But just as a reminder, um, if you're seeing this before the United Conference for all the principals in the US, NASSP, NAESP, make sure you check out and say hi to Allison. And if you bring the book, she'll sign it for you, I promise you. I sure will, I would love to. Yeah, it's such an honor. So thanks for listening. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this. We'd love to hear any comments, any questions, please throw them down in the comments. But we will see you soon, probably wearing the exact same clothes. Maybe. <laughs>